Okay, come over to my spray booth. That's it. Can't do it right here. Hi, I'm Tangles. This is my garage, and this is my car. So this is a high build plastic primer filler, uh, and it's the same brand as the color match stuff. So. I think it probably wouldn't matter. I think it's a bit of a rot, but just in case chemically this goes better with the other one I did buy this one, it was the same cost. So I bought the same brand. Hello. So rattle the um, teeth in the can for a bit and we'll slam it on. So just to ensure that there's no undue dust, I've turned the fan off that keeps me cool while I'm working in here. Um, so we know dust kicked up. I've cleaned all this with the um, wax and dress remover. And now I'm just going to prime all the um, bulk areas and all the areas where there's no paint left. Shaking the camera instead of the fucking tin. So yeah, unfortunately, because it had been dragged along the whole edge, I pretty much had to paint all of that, the primer. Now, you might be worried about this, but none of this is visible when it's on the car. This is the bottom side, so it's not that big a drama. I've gone to quite an effort on the area at the front that you'll see from a distance, but uh, you would never see up close, but anything that's actually underneath, straight up underneath, not too bothered by. Yeah. Um, I'll put too much of this on. It is a high build, but I will put it on the color coats. Um, the idea is to put the least amount of primer as I can and use the paint that is already there as the prime for most of it. Uh, so once this dries, I'll give it one more coat. So I think it said 30 minutes on the tin. Where are we? Uh, we have five minutes between drying between coats. There you go. So I'll give that five minutes. I'll put a second coat on. It says three to four coats, but this is not a bare item. Um, so I'm just going to do two coats. And then I'll let that dry a bit more. Flip it over. Repeat on all the frontal and um, top side visible surfaces. I mean, that right there really. It's going to be covered by the light when it goes in there, but can't hurt. And then once I do all that, well, I'll do that first, and then I'll see what I've done. Alrighty, second coat on. It looks just like the first one, except thicker. Okay. Uh, yeah, priming this side now. Turn it over. Another thing, you should start at the top and work your way down, because if you get a run, you can paint over the run, you know, rub the run out, and then paint over the, where the run went down. Um, it's not a trick. I think it's fairly common that people know that, but just in case. Alright, coat one done. Coat number two. Well, there's a few flaws showing up. Didn't see before. This might not be enough. Based on that, I may have to rub it all back again. Or for certain areas where the floors are. This can then be. So, certainly not going to get four or five coats. I was only planning on doing two coats in those areas. Um, I suppose I have to let it dry and give it a fine sand with some six or eight hundred grit sandpaper. And see what I've got. I may have to um, go back a step or two. Rinse and repeat in the areas that you can see, or that I can see. Time will tell. Well, welcome back to me painting the bar. The primer has showed up a few flaws which I didn't see before. Looks like this. Which, yeah, you can see there that little bit of. I don't know, that's in the middle of the box, so I don't know why I can see that. The little marks in that I can see before which are going to be worse once I um, paint it. 
Now, not too, like I said before, I'm not worried about what's on the underside here. No one's ever going to see that. So I don't want to make that pretty. You know, I don't want to fill all this a piece of bog in the first time it dries over something, it breaks off, and you see it anyway. Uh, and also, when you scrape the paint, you're going to see bog instead of plastic or, or just the, um, the primer. Um, so, I've got more sanding to do by the look of it. Um, I'm not too worried about sort of that that so much but it sort of when it starts getting down here it's getting in the in the visible oil line when the bars on the car so this is the underside and I'll do the underside first um, and then I'll do the top side I've gone and bought more primer um, so yeah I'm just going to have to sand out the stuff that I can see now that I couldn't see before and uh, yeah and paint this uh, oh and then turn it over sorry yep I'm not thinking straight. Then turn it over and do the other stuff because there is other stuff, uh, and then reprime it. I suppose it's just the, the way forward. All right. So it's not going to be finished tonight. One simple reason: this area here straight up needs bogging, which is why I've sanded it so aggressively. The rest of it I've been able to sort of rub back. And another coat of primer, high build primer, should be all right as far as. Um, Filling the small imperfections is concerned, but uh, that that's straight up bog territory that one. So I'll mix up a little bit of bog and bog that up, and that'll do me for today. All right, that bog's had overnight set. Uh, shape, sand, reprime is the plan. I'll try not to snap any on this one here. There we are again, back in the paint booth. All right, first heavy coat on the side is on. Um, we're going to do most of the spray work with the bar over the correct way, but I want to make sure I get everything you can see on this side as well. Yeah, so one heavy coat on, it needs to dry. I'll have a beer. All you can see is my guts. Right, so I've done the two coats, the side. Turn it over to the outside. Well, I can still see imperfections there. You can't see them until this goes on. There's less than there was, but I don't want to have to keep priming, sanding, priming. This is very time consuming. I didn't want to get another tin of brown. Put a second coat of this on though. In a minute. Another can down. Alright, a couple of coats in. About an hour and a half after I painted it. It says you can sand it after one hour. I think one of the bigger problems with picking up the floors has been light so I've got some more light uh, and I've got 800 grit sandpaper so the plan is to just gently rub this whole thing down and if there are any impurities sand them out if need be so what I've come across here is a slight imperfection I don't know if you can see it just here if I can feel it, I'm going to be able to see it when it's painted, so I've just got to go to the 400 grit on that, which is still quite fine, but I'll find the 800. Okay, now while it looks like there's a floor there, it's gone. It's completely gone. Same as here, the little black mark, there's nothing to it, it's not actually there. It's, I don't know what it is, but I can't feel it, so. Um, 
the base coat should cover that. Should be fine. And that's the plan, just with all the imperfections and blemishes. Blemishes. Yeah, blemishes. Is, no, blemishes. All the imperfections. Um, I should just do that and uh, yeah. Hopefully I can put some base coat on itself and then maybe do the whole thing again. So I'll give this a quick rub down with the 400. Not take much off. Rub out any blemishes I can find as best I can. And prime them again. I think, you know, I mean that's sort of what it's for. You, you block it out. Well, I've heard that phrase used. You, you prime it, sand it, prime it, sand it. And get rid of all your blemishes. Uh, maybe I'm being too finical, maybe the top coat or the base coat will um, cover more than I think it will. Okay YouTube, it's a new day. I've got better light. This is still sanded the shit out of this, obviously I did that before. Uh, I think this might have run out of camera or space, uh, battery or space. Um, so I've really, any of the flaws or anything I can find in it, I really, really aggressively sanded because I'm sick of putting coats of primer on it to see flaws in the paint. I've spent this much effort, time on it, I want it to be good when it's done, so I'm getting, I'm pretty sure I already said it before, I went aggressive. Um, and I've done half the bar, I got this half to do. I actually gave myself blisters from so much sanding, and sanding so hard. Um, I'd use a block, but everything's a curved surface, so I'm trying to keep it moulded to the surface and not um, I guess squaring it off too much. Yeah, so I plug my light back in and keep sanding. This is just to create smoother transitions around these imperfections in the paint, in the filler, or into the plastic, whatever happens to be around it. Yeah. Alright, ready to go again. Another coat of paint. There's blemishes in it. I don't know what I'll do because I mean I've gone into the plastic in some of these areas to, to remove it. Some areas I've just gone through the upper layers of paint, some areas I've gone all the way down. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Um, this is why I don't really call most of my videos how to's because this is not how you do it, I would imagine. I imagine you would do it better <laughs> because. This has taken way too long, way too much time and effort on this. But I've gone this far, I've got to make sure I've done it right. There's no point giving up, going half ass at this point. So, just another coat of paint, another prep, until I'm happy with it, and then I'll put some base coat colour on it. Um, the amount of uh, primer this has taken, well, I'm worried that the two cans I have is not enough. I may have to get another can of the. Um, the base color uh, and I have to get that mix so I mean it's not that big a deal it's just super cheap but uh, yeah should be fine look out here I'm in my paint booth again for my third attempt at undercutting this um, yeah speak for itself really I'm getting a bit annoyed with it but um, it's got to be done right uh, Obviously I'm doing something wrong somewhere in the prep work. I can't see these flaws until I paint it. I don't know why. And maybe you wouldn't see them when I put the top coat on and everything else. But I'm just not sure. I can't be sure. I want to make sure it's right. So the flaws have, the flaws have been there the whole time because I've had to go through most of them, all of the layers of paint to get them out. So maybe they're not visible on the bar. Um, Maybe I just didn't look close enough. I don't know. End result is this is my third attempt at um, priming this bar. 
and if it doesn't work this time, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll probably just do the same thing over and over again until, it, until I get a bar that has no flaws in it. But I'd really rather not do it again because it's getting tedious. Okay, I'll get that coat some time to dry. I'll turn the bar over and do the rest of it because all of that stuff there I can get from the other side. Can you see me? Alright, that heavy coat seems to have done quite a lot of coverage. Let it dry. Lay it down. Do the upper slash leading edge again. Anything that will be visible on the car. Get another coat. This opening is the last time I have to do this. It's good so far. Just going to give the whole bar a bit of a coat and anything that I see, uh, I'll just give some extra paint on. But there's a little bit less than 10, so I'll let that dry and then um, just give it a visual inspection. Give it a visual inspection and then um, I'll touch up any areas the last of the paint but it looks pretty good but I'll let that dry see what it looks like then that's it fresh out I think it's good can be top coated with color spec base coat which is just the brand uh, clear coat system and conventional single pack color coats after use uh, after using it spray it to unlock and off so it doesn't actually say how long for that, so I'll give it a rub with some 800 in about an hour, in about two beers time, and then uh, hopefully get a couple of coats of colour on it, which will be progress.